Welcome to today's lesson. We are going to be talking about advanced military vocabulary. And if you are someone who enjoys building your vocabulary, please subscribe, turn on notifications. That way I can become your teacher. My name is Wes. The channel is Interactive English. It's all about trying to help you reach your fluency goals. And in this lesson, I have some rather specific vocabulary that's related to the military. Now, if you would also like to get a copy of these lesson notes that you see right here next to me, click on the link down in the description. You can join our email community and I'll send you lesson notes from time to time. I'll also go ahead and throw that in the chat as well if you're interested. If you are already a part of our email community, that's great. Check your inbox, I've already sent them to you. So why is this useful and helpful? Because from time to time, you may watch a movie or TV show that involves the military, or let's say that you're reading a newspaper article in the New York Times or the Washington Post. Some of this is vocabulary you may come across, so it's really going to help your comprehension. Now, it is specific. If you're having a conversation, you may be able to use them, but the one thing I guarantee is that you're going to learn something new. And I, I, can, I can say that confidently only because we're going to start out talking about some slang terms. And some of this I, I didn't even know before creating the lesson. It's very... Inform these are informal words and phrases that I think are specific to somebody who's in the Army or the Navy. And the other thing I'll go ahead and tell you is that a lot of this vocabulary may also be specific to the United States, which is where I'm from. So th this, uh, in, un in other words, this vocabulary is related to uh, US, voc U.S. military vocabulary. I'll, I'll go ahead and throw that out there. But again, it's something you may come across reading an article, watching in a movie, TV show. So because I, I said this is a bit differ difficult, I'm, I'm making this part multiple choice. There are three different parts to this quiz, and I want you to participate. Write your answers in the chat or in the comments. After all, this is interactive English. I want you to take part in the lesson. So nowadays, mm is a common term for an army soldier. This is one that I maybe you will know because there's something uh, this this word is related to something else that you may be familiar with. So which which name is a common term for an army soldier? Specifically, I would say a US army soldier. I'll give you a moment, think of the answer, and then I'll tell you. And I'm, for these slang terms, I try to give a little explanation as to how they came about and why they exist. So the answer, excellent, as I see, I'll try to give some shout outs. Great job, uh, Julia, Angela, John. The answer is a Joe. So nowadays, Joe is a common term for an army soldier. I thought maybe you've heard of this before because there is a... A uh, toy character, G.I. Joe. I think it's also a, um, a cartoon. But just so you know, during World War I, a soldier was generically referred to as a Johnny. So originally a Johnny. Eventually, the term changed, and even before World War II, soldiers were being called G.I. Joes, which is where that the toy comes from, as well as the cartoon, G.I. Joe. Then we have this question right here. A soldier who is a United States Army Special Forces member may be called a... What do you think? A This is, again, specific to an Army Special Forces member. You may refer to this member as a... What? This is informal. It's slang. A lot, some of these words and phrases, I think you perhaps if you're going to come across these... Maybe not in an article in the New York Times, but maybe you're watching a movie or TV show. This may be how soldiers talk to each other, and they may use this term. So I'll give you a hint for this one. It, I think it originally came about during the Vietnam War. I don't know if that really helps you at all, is trying to determine which one is which. So I'll, I'll go ahead and start breaking it down. Tommy Knocker, 
It's not a Tommy knocker. This is actually, I think, a, like a mythical creature. I feel like there was a book written by someone. I don't know, Stephen King, Tommy knockers. Shyster, it's not shyster. This is a vulgar term that, it's an informal term that refers to a dishonest person, which then means the answer is nice. Merrick John Snake Eater. A soldier who is a United States Army Special Forces member may be called a snake eater. So Special Force me Forces members were known as snake eaters during the Vietnam War because of survival training. It was a common thing to do as a rite of passage. So I can only infer from that that as a rite of passage, if somebody is um, you know, part, a member of the Special Forces unit, then they might eat a snake as far as joining this and becoming a member. So this would be a snake eater. The next one, a mm is a person assumed to be an enemy running away from a military attack. Again, this is slang. These are not words and phrases that you're probably going to come across in, in everyday conversation, but I thought it was a fun way to start this. And once again, I didn't know many of these as well. A squirter, a lily liver, or a simp. A mm is a person assumed to be the enemy running away from a military attack. So once again, you probably could use maybe the process of elimination to arrive at the correct answer. I think I talked about the word simp in a previous lesson talking about American slang, which is slang for somebody who's trying really hard to impress someone else, I think often like to impress another woman. So we know it's not a simp. Now, lily liver. This is, again, an informal phrase that you could use to refer to someone who's scared, but it is not a military term. So I just showed you it's not B or C, which means the answer is A, squirter. Nice. Angela Talal, a squirter is a person assumed to be an enemy running away from a military attack. And this uh, says right here, it was defined elsewhere in glossaries of the war in Afghanistan as an insurgent runner leaving a target and as a person to a, attempting to escape a a uh, cordoned area. If you're unfamiliar, a cordoned area is an area that is protected by maybe military police or it's kind of guarded and somebody's trying to escape that area. They may informally be called a squirter. So now you know, and knowing is half the battle. That is a phrase from the, from the uh, cartoon G.I. Joe. A mm was a slang term for a Morse code intercept operator. A Morse code intercept operator. What do you think is the answer? This is, again, refers to a person. A Morse code intercept operator may informally be called what? A musketeer, a code cruncher, or a ditty bopper. So I think... Many of you are probably familiar with Morse code as this way of communicating a long time ago. It's not as often, I don't think, used today, but a long time ago, this term for a Morse code intercept operator was called, I feel like a lot of people would probably think code cruncher, because that is a phrase you may use somebody who's trying to break a code, but that is not the correct answer. The correct answer is a ditty bopper. Right? I had no idea before putting this lesson together that a ditty bopper was a slang term for a Morse code operator. Morse code is used by, I guess nowadays, amateur radio operators around the world. And this is, you know, food for thought. There is even an international society called the International Society for the Preservation of Morse Code. And this uh, society, I guess, is active in many different countries. So now you know that a Morse Code intercept operator was, is, well, was referred to as a ditty bopper. Since it's not really used today, I, I assume that people are uh, not using this very often at this point. The next one. A sailor 
aboard a Navy ship who has successfully crossed the equator may be referred to as a what? Take a guess if you're not sure, participate, write your answer in the comments, in the chat. What do you think? So somebody who is a, a part of the Navy and they cross the equator, what, what might you call this person? A shellback, a crisscrosser, or a beeliner? Specific to the Navy, again, uh, this is slang, so it's probably not something that, I don't know, maybe you've, you've come across or maybe you have heard of it. I'm not sure. So the correct answer for this one, if somebody's a sailor, they've successfully crossed the equator, they may be referred to as a shellback. I think some of you got that one. Well done. So sailors who have already crossed the equator are nicknamed, there are several names, shellbacks, trusty shellbacks, honorable shellbacks, or sons of Neptune. Many, many slang words for this. Those who have not crossed are nicknamed polywogs or slimy polywogs or sometimes simply slimy wogs. Good to know. Okay, so the, the next thing that I want to move into, I told you that I'm sure some of those slang terms were new for you, they were new for me, but uh, I thought that would be a fun way to start out the quiz, begin the lesson with some new, new words and phrases when it comes to military, uh, military vocabulary. Let's talk about some acronyms, and I think you're probably going to be more familiar with these acronyms which you would come across in movies, TV shows, and in even in certain articles. So what I want to do is I'm going to give you an acronym and I want you to tell me what it stands for. So what, what does the acronym stand for? And I'll, I'll put it in a sentence for you. Write your answer in the comments, in the, tra in, in the chat, and I think this one's a common one. The troops went AWOL to express their complaints about the camp. So the acronym AWOL may be used when talking uh, about something in the military, but this is an acronym that actually has become a part of just, uh, you know, general English, depending on what you're trying to convey or the context of the situation, you may or you could use this acronym. So what does it stand for? AWOL. A-W-O-L. It's a military acronym that has what meaning? And if this is new for you, I think that's great because I, I told you this is useful. You may come across this in conversations. People may use this to describe someone who is not around. So AWOL stands for absent without official leave. Or sometimes I think commonly, I know some people um, absent without leave, um, Irani, SSI, Lali, uh, John, I think that works as well, absent without leave. I guess technically speaking, you would have to put in that official leave, absent without official leave, that somebody is absent from one's post or duty without official permission, but without intending to desert. So it's not like this person intends to leave but they, they just took off and they did not get permission. And you could use this if uh, somebody is supposed to show up for an important meeting, they're not there, nobody knows where this person is, and you say, yeah, I don't know, John, he's, they're, they're AWOL. I have no idea where this person is, and they just left. So again, you could use this in just general conversations. It's a good one to know. The next one check out that picture right there. I'm sure somebody, somebody looks familiar in that picture. Tourists are allowed to visit the DMZ between the two Koreas. So this is a picture of me actually at the DMZ. This was a long time ago, back when I used to teach in South Korea. And there is a DMZ between North and South Korea. There are, I think I, I tried to look this up. I think there are several, maybe a dozen or so DMZs that currently exist around the world. But what does that acronym stand for? Again, I think this is a useful one. It's more common that you're going to come across watching something related to the military or 
reading about it, especially if you're t reading something about uh, North and South Korea. Tourists are allowed to visit the DMZ between the two Koreas. Excellent. Well done. I think many of you guys rock that. You've heard of this. We're talking about a demilitarized zone. The DMZ stands for demilitarized zone. This is an area of land from which countries or groups have agreed to remove military forces. And you have this area that there's just, it's kind of just open. There's nothing there. It's just the land. It's the DMZ, the demilitarized zone. Then we have this one. And bonus points, if anybody can tell me what this, where, where this picture comes from. First Lieutenant Sobel was the CO of Easy Company. I think even if you're maybe unfamiliar with CO, perhaps you could just put it together, what this acronym actually stands for. CO would refer to your... Mm. But First Lieutenant Sobel, this is... Uh, maybe that makes sense to some of you, maybe not. This is from a, I think, well-known... TV show that came on, it was on HBO, I think a long time ago. If you can tell me the name of the show, then you get bonus points. But otherwise, what is this acronym? CO stands for what? What do you think? I think you guys got it. Excellent. Uh, Tom, Aaron, we're talking about a commanding officer, an officer who is in charge of a group of people in the military or of a military camp or base, this is your commanding officer, this is your CO. So First Lieutenant Sobel was the CO of Easy Company and nice, well done, Aaron, Band of Brothers. This was from the show Band of Brothers. I think it, it was uh, about uh, World War II. It was a really good show. And it, again, you watch some uh, show like that that is related all about the military, that's when you start hearing some of these acronyms, some of these terms, the CO, the commanding officer. The next one, which again, I think is also very common in just general English nowadays, it's not just a military acronym. After the failed rescue attempt, some of the soldiers have been declared MIA. So MIA, this is originally and still is a military acronym. I want you to tell me what this acronym stands for. What do those three letters stand for? MIA. But once again, we can apply this to other situations that maybe don't involve the, the military. And you could just say, well, somebody's MIA. And because of that, because I think there is a regular usage of this acronym in everyday English, I imagine, again, it's one you've heard of, even if you're not exactly sure what the acronym stands for. But some of you did. Excellent. Well done. Uh, Lolly, uh, Angela, Julie, Miss uh, Julia, Sabine, trying to give some shout outs here and there. Missing in action. So MIA, missing in, in action. This is when a member of the armed forces has not returned from fighting in a war, but it's not known uh, or certain to be dead. So somebody is missing and they don't know whether this person or group of people are alive or dead. They may be declared MIA. But in just casual everyday English, if somebody is MIA, they're just, they're just not there. So to use that example before that I mentioned, somebody's supposed to show up at a certain time for a meeting or a negotiation or a presentation, and they're not there, and you don't know where they are. Well, yeah, they're you know they were they're MIA. Or you see this person again, like wait, you were MIA. Why didn't you come to the meeting or the presentation? Excellent, well done, um, Lolly, Peter, great job. So let's uh, let's do another one. The Pentagon is the headquarters. For the DOD. I mentioned at the very beginning that this lesson on advanced military vocabulary is really associated with American English, or I guess you could say the U.S. military, once again, because I am from the United States. So this is, again, very U.S. specific. 
of course, the Pentagon is the headquarters for the DOD. But whether you may be watching an interview with somebody talking about the military or, uh, again, in reading an article in the New York Times, this is an acronym that you may come across and somebody may refer to the DOD, which stands for what? I think already you guys uh, got this one. Excellent. Perfect. So the DOD is the Department of of defense. Great job, Peter Sunday, Aaron, uh, Danya, Tom. Great. The Department of the Defense, this is the department charged with supervising all agencies related to national security, the U.S. Armed Forces. So it's kind of, it's it's at the top, uh, the DOD, the Department of Defense. Okay, let's move into some more general vocabulary that uh, not only acronyms, because I mentioned as we went through that through this, some of those acronyms uh, like MIA or um, um, uh, what was the other one? I already forgot. I, I'm drawing a blank right now. Um, AWOL is another one, more used in general English, and these uh, are, are as well. So the military term Tenhut is a contraction for which command? I think these are going to be a little easier because once again, you you would maybe hear this uh, more often in movies or TV shows. Not that you're probably going to use Ten Hut in regular general conversation. This is a military command, but it's a contraction for which word? If somebody says Ten Hut, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you've heard this in a movie or a TV show with the uh, soldiers are doing this. So in this in this situation, this is when a soldier would salute possibly their CO, their commanding officer. But it is not a contraction for a salute. The ten hut is a contraction for the word good job, nice. Talal attention. So it's a contraction for the command attention, but that is what that that is what somebody is supposed to do when they say ten hut. You're supposed to then salute your commanding officer, your CO. But ten hut is a contraction for the command attention. And sometimes you may hear somebody say attention, and that's when you're supposed to stand firmly and salute the other person. Now to follow up on this, if somebody says ten hut, there's an officer. Mm. Now, possibly you've seen this movie, and bonus points, if you can tell me which movie this picture is taken from. It's a good movie. And the, the, the phrase, actually, there's an officer on, mm, actually has to do with one part of the military. And we'll talk about that when I mention what movie this is from. But you may recognize this picture and you know that the movie, ah, okay, I've seen this movie before, and then it may make sense. This is a direct quote from the movie. At the very end, this character says, Ten hut, there's an officer on, mm, and then they salute Tom Cruise. <laughs> so there's, their, there's your hint as to what movie I'm talking about. So we, we are talking about the Navy, all right? That was Tom Cruise's character. He was a part of the Navy. But I, I haven't seen it. Wow, interesting. It's not there's an officer on board. I feel like if you're, some people say board. Um, uh, we got the right movie. It's A Few Good Men. The answer is deck. There's an officer on deck. So I mentioned that you would say this to someone who might be in the Navy. And the Navy, you're on a ship, the deck of a ship. That's kind of where it's coming from. Ten hut, there's an officer on deck. This is an officer in charge of a naval vessel for an assigned period as maybe, I don't know, a four-hour watch who is stationed on the bridge while at sea or on the quarter deck while in port and who represents the commanding officer. This is from the movie A Few Good Men, which, again, I think is another, it's another good movie. It's from a long time ago, 1992. But once again, you come across some of these terms. Tom Cruise's character was part of the Navy, which is why the quote says there's an officer on deck. Excellent. Well done. The next one, 
I've given you some army military rankings here. And I think this is somewhat, I guess, useful vocabulary that uh, you may hear these rankings being talked about uh, at, at one point or another. So it basically starts, um, th this is actually the lower level and it goes to the higher level down here. So second lieutenant, this is a lower level and then first lieutenant, then captain, and then what? That's the one that I want you to try to, to think about. And then we move on down here and then general of the army is the higher rank, the higher position on this list. I know typically we'd like to think of things at the top being the highest, but in this case, it kind of goes the other direction. But which rank is, uh, is blanked out there? So second lieutenant, first lieutenant, captain, and then we have, well done, um, Aaron, Julia, Nikolai, Peter Sunday, Sapin, uh, Tom, Major. Now, uh, I said somebody, you put Sergeant in there. That also works because I think technically it's Sergeant Major. So instead of Sergeant, people may just, and saying Sergeant Major, they would just say Major. But I think Sergeant would also be an, an acceptable answer. So Second Lieutenant, First Lieutenant, Captain, then Major, then Lieutenant Colonel, Colonel, Brigadier General, Major General, Lieutenant General, General, General of the Armory. Many different rankings, as you can see. Well done, though. You guys, uh, I, you guys knew that one. I was, I'm, I'm impressed. How about this? Um, the president said he had no intention of mm, ground troops. Now there probably there may be a couple of different verbs that you could use. There's one specific verb that I'm thinking of that is specific when talking about the military. And that is the verb that I, I put here, even though I, I think you could, uh, you could use a couple of different verbs in order to complete, um, or in this case, a couple of different gerunds to complete this sentence. The president said he had no intention of mm, ground troops. So <clears throat> the verb that I'm talking about, or in this case, again, it's used as a gerund, but often it's used as a verb to mm, troops is one that you guys know. And I think it's useful if you don't know it, but the answer, well done, Lolly, Peter, Manuel, uh, Manuel, deploy. To deploy means to move troops or equipment into position for military action, to deploy ground troops. Now, I, I mentioned there are other verbs that you could use. I guess you could say of sending ground troops, mobilizing ground troops. Of course, those would work, but the answer that I was looking for was, or that I wanted to teach you, that I wanted you to be aware of this verb, to deploy, is when you are moving and our troops or equipment into position for some type of military action to deploy. The next one, the office buildings were used as hmm for the soldiers. The office buildings were used as hmm for the soldiers. This is a word that you, again, may come across, you're watching a show like Band of Brothers, or you're watching a movie like A Few Good Men. I think in both of those movies, this word is absolutely mentioned. The office buildings were used as mm for soldiers. And I think the picture there may give it away because as you can see, that looks like uh, your standard or stereotypical housing for a group of soldiers. And that building you would refer to as the barracks. Excellent, nice. Uh, Manuel, uh, Sabine, Julia, H Helena, nice. So barracks would be the building um, or a group of buildings where soldiers live. And again, you would use this specifically when talking about housing soldiers, the army barracks, the military barracks. But as I just mentioned, you would come across it in movies, TV shows, or again, reading an article 
uh, that has to do with the military. And you may hear or come across this word barracks. So when you hear barracks, think of like, okay, where the soldiers live or are currently living, the barracks. Well done. Nice. Uh, you guys did a, a, a fabulous job. Here's a little review. Some of the, the words and phrases, again, we started out with those slang terms, which I don't think, I, I'm sure that many of those are new for you, but it's probably not something that you're going to come across uh, all the time or probably even use. The other vocabulary I definitely think is more relevant, like those military ac uh, acronyms, spe specifically AWOL, MIA, you could use in other contexts, DMZ, DODCO would be acronyms you would certainly come across if you're reading something, an article that has to do with the military, as well as that vocabulary that we just looked at. Ten Hut, Officer on Deck, Army Rankings, uh, when looked at all of them, Deploy and Barracks. So, of course, my question right now is, how did you do on the quiz? I'm going to put this little poll in there, uh, and I want you to let me know how you did on the quiz. And... Um, you could say, let's see, I, um, I am a <laughs> general, let's put it this way. Uh, I'm a general would be, you did perfect. Um, let's say that would be like 100%. Let's say we talked about the word major. I am a, our, our, yeah, major would be 50%. Maybe you got half of them right. And then I'll add another one. I am a first uh, lieutenant would be, let's say, less than 25% correct. All right, there are <clears throat> the options that I wanna give you for this. Um, okay, wait a second. Uh, Oh, wait, this was a quiz. Uh, I keep doing these polls. Sorry about that. Um, I always choose the, <laughs> the, wrong, the, the wrong one. Um, no, no, that was it. I don't know why it didn't let me post that. Okay, anyway, you can let me know in the chat or the comments how you did on the quiz. But with all of these, <clears throat> my goal is that you just learn something new and that with each of these lessons, you can participate, interact, Take part in the lesson and try to slowly and continuously build your vocabulary. And yeah, hopefully, if anything, maybe if you're not, if you don't end up using a lot of these words in speaking or writing, you come across them when you're you're listening to something or reading. It's just going to help you improve your overall comprehension. So I hope you enjoyed the lesson, learned something new. If you did, please let me know by hitting that like button. And of course, I will be back with another lesson in the future.